Okay, thank you. Um, okay, uh, Alexa Anderson. You're here? Yes. Yeah. Court Booth? Heather Bout? Good morning, here. Good morning. Um, Peter Fischelis? Don Garelio, she's joining us later. Um, Lori Hunter? Present. Mark Howell? Present. I'm present. Pat Nelson. Uh, Chris Popov? He's joining. He's joining now. Oh, there he is. I see. Okay. Charlie Parker? Here. And Matt Root? Here. Steven Staszewski? Okay. So I call this meeting to order and we will now, um, the committee will move into executive session. So we will stop recording and we are excusing our, everyone. Pat, you need, Pat, you need a roll call to go into exec session and then the committee has a separate link that they're gonna go to. This is complicated. I don't know how to do this. So just roll call um, to into exec session first. Okay, roll call into exec session. Well, I move that we move into executive session for the purposes stated in the minutes. Right. Second. I say okay. Alexa? Yes. You good with that? Heather? Yes. Okay. Uh um, when oh, I saw court come in, court's here now. Okay. Court. Who sent who sent the link for the exec session? I Aaron, uh, Higgins. Aaron Higgins, I'm resending it right now. Oh, okay, very nice. Oh, so we have a separate link to the. Correct. This Correct. is very complicated. Okay, um, Lori Hunter, you're good with that. Yes. Mark Howell. Yes. I'm good with that. Chris Popov. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Matt. Yes. Steven Staszewski. Yes. Okay. Who? Uh, yes. Did Peter Fischelis come on? Did anyone see him? Okay. Not yet. All right. So now, do tell. What do we do? Are so we now to go to exec session, the committee's going to go to their other link. This this uh, this one's going to stay open, Ian, right? Yes. So the public can stay put until we come back. Okay. Okay. We are now calling to order the regular meeting of Thursday, November 16th, 2023. Um, so we want to approve the meeting minutes of October 19th. Correct. Do we have any, any changes or everyone? Move to approve. I hear a second. Okay, Alexa. She had to go. Okay. Uh, Court? Aye. Heather? Aye. Peter? Peter Fischelis for October 19th minutes. I don't see Peter. Yeah. Hasn't gotten back. Dawn? Yeah. Lori? Yes. Mark? Yes. Here, uh, I was not at that meeting, so I'm abstaining. Uh, Chris Popov? Is Chris still with us? No. Don't see him. Okay, Charlie? Yes. Matt? Yes. Steven Sashevsky? Yes. Okay. All right, I think they are approved. Um, and we can go on to our correspondence and communication update. Heather? Mm -hmm which will be very quick because unless something came in that I didn't receive, we haven't gotten any public correspond or correspondence from the public um, and communication just the same as it was, which is for sending out periodic kind of, um, you know, event-based updates with photos. So that's it, unless there are any questions. No. Okay. Okay, Hill, okay, I'm update. All right, thank you. Uh, so we'll hop right in here. We'll do a financial update and then talk about construction progress. Um, <clears throat> so on the budget budget summary sheet here, we've got um, 
two updates on this page. I think just the um, the change order one for CTA is uh, has been approved and is now in the committed column. So that's now shown as a construction cost. Um, and then we've updated the forecasted costs based off of current um, potential change orders that we have from CTA that are that are in the works here. So 161,294 um, is the the new forecast. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's any changes here on the first page. Um, the committed costs are now at 98. 429 641 um we've got 4.5 million in construction contingency remaining uh 838,000 in owners contingency soft cost contingency remaining um the other contingencies are completely untouched we've got expenditures to date at 20,879,518 um and that will uh tie out to our cash flow so any questions on budget summary no. uh so cash flow we've got um let's see Actual expenditures this month for the month of November, 4.5, almost 4.6 million. Um, pretty big uptick on the construction side due to the steel uh, erection process. So again, we're at 20.8 million for expenditures to date. And here's our chart that shows, you know, following the curve here nicely. Um, as we proceed with construction. Questions, Charlie? Yeah, I just want at some point just repeat where we are with the construction contingency and the and the numbers. I, I recall the 31,000, but the number seemed quite a bit larger than 31,000. It uh, was at 161 against the construction contingency. Those are just forecasted costs, so it's not it's not a hit on contingency yet. It's just forecasted costs against against that contingency. So, but there's nothing there's nothing in the queue that would take us to 161 that's explicitly kind of sitting there. Um, there's ten. You don't have 161 thousand dollars worth of items on the table, right? No, that that is what we have on the table. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they've asked, they've asked for one hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars worth. Yes. Oh. Yeah. There's there's probably over ten uh, potential change orders that are in the queue that it accounts for this forecast, and those are related to you know just ch changes. Um, some some are uh, bulletin related. Um, SMMA just uh, cleaning up some of the some of the drawings. Uh, others are um, unforeseen uh, things. So I don't know if Jonathan wants to. You, you need more detail than that on the PCO log. I think it's good to, you know, stay on top of this in terms of understanding what's going on. I'm not, I don't think we're going to take action on any of this or vote on it, but it's good to have the detail. Yeah. Th this is something that we review every, every week with the technical review committee. Um, you know, just something that, that we continue to keep our finger on as far as tracking uh, where we're at with progress for uh, changes. So, well, is it is it is it appropriate to provide us with a summary, uh, just to keep us in the loop so that we're kind of a part of this? Is it appropriate or not? I guess that would be my question. Rather than just saying it's one hundred sixty-one thousand, okay, we're moving on. You know, kind of what's there. Um, again, uh, I think that keeping us in the flow here of things would be 
I think yeah, I mean, try. right right now we were just presenting it at a, at a summary level. Um, if there's a a need to get into more details, we can we can do that. We can certainly right. provide the, the PCO log to the committee, but that is what is reviewed by the TRC weekly. Uh, Steve, did yes, you want to weigh in on yeah, this so since you're on that committee? Each week we do review all the open change orders and direct, you know, direct costs that are being proposed by CTA. I will say that the 161000 doesn't currently tie out to any document that the TRC has in hand. So I think as going forward, starting next week, and we'll report on it next, next committee meeting, uh, that our PCO log that we review is tying out to what's going to be proposed in this monthly update. And so that yep. that's something that we would normally do. We, there's a lot of little things um, on the list, but nothing has come to full fruition to be, you know, finally reviewed and, and approved within the technical review committee. Um, I would I would personally like to be able to speak to the 161 in this call based on the prior four weeks of of technical review committee. Uh, but right now, the 161 doesn't tie necessarily back to anything that we have in hand. So. Yeah, I guess all I'm asking for is that we have a little bit of color on this rather than just a number. I agree with you. I just That's want to clarify. Know. We have we have that, that be you, Steve, that would do that each week or or each meeting or or what? I would be able to say that we have the PCO log that shows the forecasted costs of 161, and the PCO log is being reviewed by technical review committee, and that it all is appropriate to date. Uh, but you know. Without the without the final the log matching the one sixty one in hand today, I can't say that today. I'd like to next time. I think that's a very good practice that we should get into. You know, used to doing. What I can add to this is currently we're up to PCO sixteen. We did receive, I believe, four additional ones this week. Uh, of those sixteen, over half of them we've reviewed and and kicked back to CTA for corrections, revisions. Uh, the others currently are in design teams court. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, actually three of them, we've got uh, design team review and it's now in Hills court to respond to CTA. Uh, but none of these are, are at the level that we are ready to present them to the TRC for approval uh, still you know, in the review and in the back and forth with the CTA process. Yeah, like the, the log that we should be reviewing each each week should total 161 and it should have 16 PCOs and they should have descriptions and they should have an anticipated, you know, what the projected date uh, cost is from CTA. Un, unvetted, unreviewed, still need to go through the ringer and drag through the mud to, to get it to a point where it's presentable to, to the CTA the technical review committee to review or reject or, or approve. Uh, but at least that log uh, should tie out to what's presented here. Yep. Yeah, I think I think what happened is you saw a log last Thursday. We've got PCO since then. Exactly, yeah. so that's the that's the uptick um, to get to this value. So. so my understanding is that, Charlie, it sounds like you would like to see all these all these uh, 16 PCOs and understand what's going on, but that actually that's the job of the technical review committee and there are steps that need to be taken before it's really ready for prime time for our committee to 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 see and understand them. No, I, I don't, I'm not asking to see all 16 items. I just want to see a little bit of color on this, a little bit of opinion as to the as to process and and uh, you know the perception of of how things are going, whether anything is abnormal and so forth, just a little bit more than a number. So, Pat, if I can jump in very briefly, hopefully my computer will behave at the moment. Um, one of the items I think what it, it probably makes this a little bit more confusing, and I'll work with um, Ian and folks offline. Is these come up during our weekly oh wait, the construction meeting that we have every. Tuesday, and then we go through the list and what's coming on board. And then as they're ready for us to review as part of TS TRC, we would look into them in more detail. And as part of what I'm doing on site each week when I'm out there is 
looking through these to determine where they are in the process, what information we're needing, and, and what do we need to do to bring them to TRC. So what we can do is look at a better way to package these up for TRC to Steve's point. And then when we have this monthly meeting, what makes the most sense and what's the cleanest way to present where we are. So um, I will take that feedback back and work with the group, but it's these are getting reviewed during multiple meetings. And I think timing is going to be key to make sure that what's getting presented is consistent because we do get new ones coming in on a daily basis. So I think cutoff is going to be key for when we're putting these packets together. So well, I that's, can... that's good. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Gail. Okay, Ian. Okay. Uh, so we made it through budget, cash flow. Uh, this is the TRC approval update uh, for the period of November 2023. So um, things that are that are grayed out here for the commitments was just the change order that we already talked about with CTA. Um, this is a log of the budget ad adjustments um, and, and contingency usage. So you'll see that um, CTA uh, change order was taken out of hard cost contingency. Um, these are all prior modifications. Same with um, AKF and SGH uh, change order um, to account for that. Uh, basically, the whole building air leakage testing and mock up testing. Um, and then there was one for FINA engineering to cover their base. Uh, services. Uh, we had an overrun there of 39,000. So we transferred money from soft cost contingency to cover those two. Um, and then uh, that gives you the current balance that ties out to the budget summary. So 4.5 million for hard cost, 8, 838,000 for soft cost. And then uh, invoices this month, we had a number of invoices from various vendors. We had one from FINA who does the uh, material testing, concrete testing, steel inspections. We've got one from Malta Vista who uh, provides our camera on site. Uh, AKF is the commissioning agent, bid docs online. This is for um, the bid process. Uh, any Anyone that had printed copies of the, the bid documents, this was the, the charge for that. Um, that's a that's a final invoice for the, the bidding for bid docs. Um, Hill and National Services uh, for the month of October. SMMA Services for October. Um, CTA was the big one, four point four million for their progress payment. Um, and then we had some uh, legal fees uh, as well that were processed this month. So. Total invoices at four point six million. Any questions? Okay, let's let's see that construction progress. All right, so construction progress. Uh, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of exciting things happening on site. We've got. Um, you know, if anyone's driven by, we've got a pretty substantial build, building out there at this point. Um, so I'll, I'll talk you through the progress. So um, building C, which is the one closest to the existing school, uh, the steel erection and detailing is complete. We've got concrete slab on deck at 65% complete. So they've started concrete pours over there. Um, they have prepared the slab on grade area and they're planning to pour that next Monday. So that's gonna that's gonna happen soon. They've started exterior wall framing on C1, which is um, the part of the building closest to the existing school. And then they're starting to actually wrap the building for for winter work. So they're going to put they're going to tarp tarp the building and start heating it um, to finish concrete 
and uh, do spray on fireproofing and start to see some other trades in inside of that part of the building. So that's building C and that's actually what we're looking at here. Um, building B, uh, the footings and foundations are complete. The waterproofing and backfill is complete at this point. Um, the erection is complete as well. And then they've got some detailing ongoing. So they've ma made some good progress on building B as well. Um, building A is the furthest away from the existing school. Uh, the footings and foundations are 85% complete. They've got a few more pours to do for those footings and foundations. Steel erection is in progress for a portion of that building. And then, um, you know, they're looking to wrap up in the near future. So um, we've got, uh, you know, upcoming Again, building foundations for building A to be completed in the coming weeks. We've got a, a topping off uh, December 1st is what we're planning for steel erection for topping off. Um, you'll start to see some spray fireproofing activities uh, in the coming weeks and the continuation of concrete slabs within the building. So that's kind of in, in the building footprint um, outside of the building footprint we've got uh, quite a bit of site work going on still they are working on the ramp and site wall foundations at the south elevation so um, the, the uh, ramp that we spent a good amount of time talking about uh, during the design phase that kind of goes and wraps up around the back of the building there that's being uh, constructed the roadways have been established in the parking area. Uh, they are planning to pave those in the coming weeks before the asphalt plants close. We've got the stormwater infrastructure for phase one is about 85% complete. So they're, they've, they've made uh, you know significant progress there this year on stormwater infrastructure. Uh, the electrical conduit to the building is complete uh, to the transformer pad. And then they've got kind of the main artery going through the building as well. Uh, the domestic water and fire suppression piping is complete to the building footprint. So that's the, the water taps that we talked about last meeting all the way over to the building um, at this point. And we've got uh, underground electrical and plumbing is complete in building C, hence their ability to do the slab on grade in building C. Um, and then those those trays are ongoing in buildings A and B. So other uh, other highlights here, we are anticipating temporary power in the in the coming weeks, um, getting that over to the building footprint and online so that the trades can use that uh, more readily for construction purposes. We've got um, the building, they do a mock-up of the uh, building enclosure, uh, windows and, and whatnot. And uh, we're anticipating doing some performance testing on that in December. Um, we did have some, some email uh, concerns voiced about just vibrations on site with the, the huge compactors that are there. Um, we did address those with the neighbors. Our site manager went and spoke personally to a number of the neighbors uh, just to kind of talk through those concerns and alleviate those concerns. So things that we're trying to manage as construction progresses. Uh, we had a really nice uh, tour with the student building committee on November 6th, uh, which was a really nice uh, opportunity to showcase to the student building committee what's happening on site. And uh, we have a tour scheduled tomorrow with, with you guys. So hopefully you can all make it. Uh, to see progress up close um, tomorrow morning. And then uh, upcoming is, again, the steel topping off ceremony on December 1st is what we're planning. So. Any questions? Thank you, Ian. This is uh, very gratifying to see everything moving along. Um, yeah. So our next item is the CPC funding update. No, oh, sorry. I had a few more. I have oh, a few I'm more sorry. photos to show if you want to. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
just some progress photos of the the building C steel erection process here. Um, you know, they they were basically shaking out steel on the side of the hill here, and then um, you know lifting it into place uh, with the crane uh, as part of the erection process. Um, this section here is the connector bridge. So you can start to see that take shape here, the two story connection between the two, the two main buildings. Um, this is some shots up on, uh, I think it's the, the first level here, uh, where you see the, the decking, the steel decking going down, uh, as well as reinforcing and prep for, uh, the slab pours. And then here's some protected slab uh, that they put down. Um, so starting to see more and more concrete pours happening in inside the building. And then uh, we've got a few drone captures here. This is from November 7th. Um, so you, you can see the building taking shape uh, in the bottom right corner. Um, still got the, the big loam pile here. Um, this is the rest of the of the building footprint. Starting to see those those foundations and boundaries there. Um, we've got parking parking areas uh, starting to take shape as well, and some of the roadways that we talked about through the site uh, and through the parking area. Um, and those will get paved in the near future. But um, just kind of a nice nice shot of what's happening out there. Um, and then this is the the one that shows you uh, elevations uh, as well. So is that it? And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. Um, so CPC funding update. We have not heard from them. Okay. Um, Lori, I sat next to Paul Bohm at the um, chairs meeting yesterday, and. He said there was a request um, from the CPC uh, to get a letter of support from this committee. And I wasn't sure. I thought perhaps we'd done that, but. Um, I'm, okay. I'm he hadn't, yeah, that hadn't come to me. We can talk about that for sure. Okay. So this would be just a letter from this committee supporting our request to the CPC for funding for the fields. Um, Lori, do you, want to say anything about that? Or? I think that's, I, I, having worked with other folks applying, it's a typical standard part of the process. So they're, okay. they're just following up on the no, normal expectation, I think. So, all right. So that hadn't come to me yet, Pat. We can work on that if the committee. Yeah. If, unless anyone has any objection, we can right. draft the letter and then share it and um, send it. I think that sounds fine. Can you remind us who is the official applicant? Uh, the town manager. Thank you. So we would be sending a letter of support to Carrie, and Carrie would be submitting it. Uh, the, the letter of supports usually go right to the CPC. Right to the CPC. Okay. Well, we can work on that. Yeah. All right. Um, any new business? Yeah, just briefly, um, could somebody send me the details of the site visit tomorrow just so that I have them and uh, can, can be there? Yeah, and, uh, yep. that I would wanted... be me, Mark. I'm going to send it to everybody, actually. Thank you, Lori. And I wanted to announce that um, on Monday, the select board will nominate Tim Holt to take Frank Gannon's position on the on the middle school building committee. So we'll be um, then pleased to welcome him back to this process. Um, yeah. I think. That's great news. Within. We can't wait to see him again. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great to hear. Yeah. Mark, I'll include him on the tour information just in case he can do a quick turnaround tomorrow. That'd be great. If he can't already see it from his house. <laughs> it's probably tempting to get out there then. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, public comment? Okay, I see no hands. Next steps, our next meeting. Do we have a meeting date, Ian? We do. It's, um, let's see, it is December 
21st. Okay. Uh, do I hear a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Then I think I we're don't adjourning. think we have to vote on that. <laughs> I thought we didn't have to vote on it. We don't. That. We don't. We don't. We don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, said, but I, I don't, do I don't think we call. have to. <laughs> yeah. I didn't need to do a roll call. Okay. Nope. Great. Then I think we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Pat. Everybody. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.